and good morning. It is Thursday, October 4th. We are four days into this seemingly flawless month of October. Without further ado, let's roll right into our next movie, which is straight from Netflix. So finally, we've gotten away from the Amazon Prime train, which we'll be back to. And we're now in the Netflix area. And this is a new Netflix arrival. Not a new movie per se, but new to Netflix. And this is probably where I'm going to lose some of ya, or gain some of ya, because again, it's gonna be a little more of a B movie, definitely off the beaten path. One of my all time favorites, and I will defend it at the end of this video. The video for today is Murder Party, which came out in 2007 and is directed by Jeremy Saunier. Now, Jeremy's done a lot, well, he hasn't done a lot, but he's done some amazing movies. He basically hasn't done a movie I haven't loved. Murder Party was his first major movie after that. He did Blue Ruin. And then he did Green Room, which has Patrick Stewart as basically the head of this neo-Nazi gang, which if that sentence alone doesn't sell you, nothing will. All three of those movies are amazing, and I believe he has a newer one coming to Netflix soon if it's not there already. Should I do my homework? Look for a title down below. All right, let's talk Murder Party. So, Murder Party focuses on Chris. He's your main character. He's kind of this lowly hermit type of person. You know, definitely a guy who doesn't seem very sociable or seem, seems like he has a lot of friends. And while walking to and from work one day, he stumbles randomly upon an invitation to a Halloween-themed costume party. He takes it, and Chris is not a guy who gets many invitations, and he goes, you know what? I'm gonna seize the day and go to this random party, and he does just that. He goes home, he makes one of the coolest cardboard costumes I think I've ever seen anybody ever make, and then he boogies off to this random party in parts unknown in Brooklyn somewhere, which is located in a isolated warehouse, definitely in some sort of industrial park. Unbeknownst to Chris, he's definitely fallen into a trap set by a group of deranged artists who are hoping to lure someone to their lair where they're hoping to murder this person on Halloween night for some sort of art project. I feel like I've lost a lot of you already with just that statement of what this movie is about. Bear with me, I will defend it later on. Chris gets tied up, and that's kind of where more of the goofiness of the movie comes out. People start kind of accidentally dying. Somebody has an allergy to something and then just kind of dies. That's kind of where this movie gets a lot of its humor from. It definitely has a Kevin Smith feeling to it. When I say when I say a Kevin Smith feeling is that you kind of have a single location with a group of quirky characters, and there's a lot of talking heads that kind of talk about a little bit of everything. Primarily, the focus is how they're going to kill Chris. And they kind of go over a slew of different things. Throughout the movie, Chris maybe escapes, maybe doesn't. Maybe there's a pursuit, maybe there's not. But you get a little bit more action, a little bit more violence towards the end of this movie. But where I feel this movie really excels is A, you have a group of just fun, quirky characters who are kind of unique in their own rights. And I think the acting and the dialogue is really enjoyable. More so, I really think this movie did a great job capturing the essence, the feeling of a good Halloween rich style movie. You know, for example, when Chris is walking down the streets of Brooklyn, you know, I love the shots as simple as they are of like the bakery storefront window that has all these types of uh, you know, pumpkin cookies or brownies with the live balls on them, or just even catching the cool ambiance of these cool Brooklyn towns with their own kind of natural Halloween flair to them. And I thought Jerry did a great job capturing that feel. It feels like it's shot on Halloween and I love that. So. It's definitely a slow burn of a movie, but I absolutely adore Murder Party. Adore it, adore it. See every movie this guy's done. I think he's very good at capturing the character of kind of the, the moments. Everything's just kind of rich. Even though it's subtle, I think that there's the detail there that makes everything really enjoyable. So, Murder Party, I'm giving it 9 out of 10. Ugh, I'm taking that back. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna curve that score. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 just because I know it's gonna be a little bit slower for most folks. I've seen it over a dozen times. I'm giving this a high recommendation. This could potentially be another good pumpkin carving movie while you're maybe cooking or baking or making a couple cocktails and you kinda of need something on in the background but something that you kind of watch and enjoy. I'm definitely gonna give you a high recommendation for Murder Party, now streaming on Netflix. All right, you're home. You got a bowl of candy corn ready. You got Murder Party queued up from the Netflix and you need a cerveza for Murder Party. I'm gonna recommend Waddle by Off Color Brewing right here in Chicago. 6.5% ABV. I haven't had this one. The cap's still on, haven't practiced yet, so we're gonna try this one out together. But I didn't say this already, it's an Oktoberfest lager, and it's a great one. It's smooth, it's not too heavy. You can easily do two or three of these during the course of Murder Party. And I know you're thinking, well, Rob, how can you pair this beer if you haven't had it with it? Just a, just a hunch I have. It's kind of a gift, just put it that way. A solid contender. If it's just a good, solid, right in the middle of the road, Oktoberfest lager. Come on back tomorrow. Start about Friday. Have a good night.